Adrian here has been kind enough to invite Ross, my friend who I met on Instagram actually. Yep. So right. he's got an Instagram account called Tanks for Watching and a YouTube as well. Adrian's invited us to come and see his fish room and you've been actually keeping fish for about 45 years. Yep, so 45 years. And these are all the types of fish and tanks and setups and stuff that he's been interested in, I guess, over time. Which is really what this fish room's about. It's the species that I enjoy um, to keep and to breed mm -hmm. and that interest me and challenge mm -hmm. me mostly. And you're also a plumber as well, which plumber means that you've got makes it easy, yeah. um, very intricate um, setups for water changes and stuff as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, if I had to do them manually, I, I wouldn't have this many tanks. I think there's going to be a lot to learn from this video, but also it's going to be really interesting as well, seeing some of the rare fish species mm -hmm. and I think as well the aquascapes are really nice. So lots of beautiful plants and stuff as well. So awesome. Well, shall we get into it? Yeah, let's do Thank it. Thank you. Awesome. We're just going to go around the fish room. So we're going to start here at the beginning with this amazing eight foot tank, um, which amazingly was only set up two weeks ago, mm -hmm. which is incredible that it looks the way that it does. So we'll show you that. And then we will go to the tanks around the back there as well. So we'll start with this one. Um, let me grab that food. So Adrian's just going to grab some food for them. And this one's a pretty cool tank because it's got tetras in it, um, but they're quite large ones. Yeah, so oh, these fish use. are um, all of the large species of tetra that I've been keeping and breeding for a few years now and um, also uh, one of my mates has given me a whole heap of these guys to put into this large display specifically for large tetras. There's mm -hmm. angels, um, we've got probably 25 um, sub-adult peppermint plecos in here as well mm -hmm. and um, corydoras, they're adelphi corydoras down the bottom. Oh yes. Here at the moment there's maybe uh, seven or eight in there, but they're just the start. I've got a tank with roughly a hundred or so, or I had a hundred or so in there, but it'll come across here as well once they've finished spawning. But uh, all of the angels in there were babies that I bred and um, most of the plants um, were stuff that I've been keeping in other tanks for a while as well. And then I decided I'd scape it. If you look above, you've also done a bit of scaping on top of yeah, the tank too. Yeah, I'm crazy beautiful. for plants, that's right. And that's the interesting thing too with water changes. You were saying that you have them all connected and so you just use an overflow so the water just runs out. I do, yeah. So yeah. all of this particular rack is all mm -hmm. on the one sump, which um, I'll show mm -hmm. you through later, but the mm -hmm. um, uh, all of the, the water is the same water, so I can move mm -hmm. fish around, which is quite helpful at times. But they, um, I find that Particularly with a larger volume of water, it's it's easier to maintain the parameters. Not that I really check them too much. Mm -hmm. I've never had to worry about nitrates or ammonia or anything like that, really. Um, and it's amazing too some of the plants that you grow um, as well without using anything like CO two. Yeah, no um, CO two, no. It's all um, yeah organic fish poo, really. Yeah. How much that's what you use for a substrate? Is it? Yeah, um, I have a favourite which is um, playground sand from ah. the big green box store. Yep. Yes. Um, it says wash, but you still got to wash it. So most tanks you'll find that in the bottom. Um, I've used different gravel this time around in this tank just mm -hmm. because I don't have any Corydoras in there at the moment. Um, not that that would be a problem for the Corys. I've got uh, nearly a hundred in the tank uh, mm -hmm. next to it, which is the Adolfois, but um, they definitely prefer sand. You know, I found they breed better on sand. They, um, mm -hmm. They'll bury themselves, you know, almost completely in it sometimes as well, which is fantastic. And then you've got a bircher in here. Yeah, so yeah. this is a um, um, an oddball tank. Let me just grab this food. Wow, he's huge. He's so beautiful. Shot of him too. Yeah, he's he's spectacular. I love um, when the sunlight comes through the window and he will sit on the logs there and basically bask in it and he can hover and you know goes backwards and forwards. I, from what I understand. Um, they've got the plates at the back of the um, the skull that actually can lift and breathe out of the the back of their head as well. So um, um, yeah, they they incredible. And uh, then you've got some peppermint bristle nose, is it? Yeah, so they're all peppermint bristle nose. You're doing uh, a bit of breeding. That's the breeding colony. Yeah, so mm -hmm. there's 25, I think, large adults in there. Had them again, five or six years, and um, one koi angel. That's the mum. Um, the, I lost the the father only yesterday actually but you'll see mm -hmm. up the top they've got on that leaf there a whole spawn oh yes 
Yeah, it's really cool. You can see the babies wiggling around. Yep, and that's the mother of all of these angels in this tank over here as well. Oh, so she won't be incredible. lonely once she gets those kids get too much to handle. I'll take her out and put her into the to mm -hmm. the eight foot tank the and give tank. her a rest. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one's only got the Adolfoi corridors in here. You mm -hmm. can see them there at the back. Um, I, they, in fact, those angels just came out of there a week ago. So mm -hmm. that's really just a. I guess to get as many uh, eggs as I can out of them before I put them into the eight footer as well and then that tank. I'm not sure, I'm thinking actually I might even get a flower horn, a little baby flower horn and grow him up and have a wet pet, you know? Yeah, that'd be yeah. cool. Yeah, I use, I've always had Oscars and I don't have any at the moment. So. Yes, well that's the thing Adrian was saying that this tank used to be a monster fish tank. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, two weeks ago. Two yeah, only, weeks only ago. two weeks ago and look at it now. Yeah, it it's had incredible. filament barbs, denison barbs and... Um, um, some red tail sharks, Oscars, black belt cichlids. So my mate took them, which is great. So I didn't have to uh, let them go. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're an eight foot tank over there, which looks spectacular as well. So he's enjoying them and I'm enjoying these. He gave me some of the tetras, which is fantastic. So mm -hmm. we swap fish, we share fish. All right, let's have a look at the bottom ones, shall we? Yeah. So um, if we go to the one on the far left there, that's mm -hmm. the neon blue Akaras. The dad's hiding around the corner there if you go around. He'll probably, he'll probably come out. Oh, there he is around there. So here's the, um, that's the adult breeding pair that I've got. Mm -hmm. And I'll, you'll see the babies shortly. But um, yeah, they're tried and tested breeders, those guys. And they're in there with probably 45 or so panda quarries, mm -hmm. which is, there's a couple under the log and a few on the wall there going up and down. Um, yeah, they breed really well together. Um, I have found that the panda quarries do eat, uh, tend up eating some of the Akara babies though, so um, they, they, they tend to keep them on the ground of a night time, so I will move them on, but I've, I've probably got, I don't know, maybe 400 babies out of those guys so far, mm -hmm. so I don't really need them to keep breeding. I think they can have yeah. a rest as well. <laughs> um, and then the tank over there, we've got, um, I guess they're wild tight looking angels. Mm -hmm. uh, they're spawning I in there. You can. Um, so they're spawning in there at the moment. Um, they've moved their eggs onto the corner, which we won't be able to see, but they, um, there's quite a few hundred eggs in there uh, yesterday, and uh, seven or eight rummy nose, you know, 15 or so of the uh, neon tetras, and common plecos you'll see. There's tons of common plecos, and right down here you'll see how tiny the babies are. Um, and there's Matai Corridoras in there as well. Again, they are um, a little shy, unless they can, oh, there's more plecos down there, but the Corridoras, there they are oh, at the yeah, back. I see them all hiding there. And there's um, yeah. probably 45 to 50 of those guys in there as well, um, all that I bred myself. Uh, I usually start with seven. I like um, uneven numbers, fives or sevens yeah. if I'm gonna breed. Um, and similarly, these ones over here, the next tank is the 397s, mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. and they breed really well. Um, and I've got some black Venezuelan quarries in there. I might just try to move that moss and see if you can see the um, if there's any babies in here. You can see all the mulm. Uh, the 397s uh, eat the, the timber, as you can see why the timber's so clean yes. there like that. So that's what all that mom is, but um, the black Venezuelan quarries down here, I think they're called black Schwarzii, are um, quite difficult to breed really. They have far less eggs each spawn, and um, with that many snails that I've got in there, I don't get a whole heap out. I probably get a couple of babies every six months, so I've got to pull them out and put them into a tank of their own with no snails. Yep. Um, but they're in there with, um, uh, probably 20 cardinals, member tetras, and um, I don't know if you'll see him at the top, will you? The, uh, there's an African butterfly fish. Oh, yes. If he's in there or not, he was quite, he's very shy. He's in there. Yeah, I did see him before. We did see him before. He's Might have to now. even get some B roll of him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, um, the tank itself is. I just leave it, I don't touch it, particularly um, with the 397s when breeding, I think any of the L numbers, it's best just to leave them alone. Yeah. And then, um, you know, put the food in there that they like and then they will just do their thing. And um, I found 
three 97s out of all the L numbers and the peps for me are the easiest ones to breed. Yep. I'm having difficulty with the triple threes, but I'll get there on those ones. So that's all of those tanks which are at the front. And so now, let's make our way around to these ones. And I'll do the same on this side, turn these lights off. Um, so, you may know as well if you've seen um, Ross's page. So, tank for watching, tanks for watching. That he actually keeps um, kind of similar setups too. This is kind of more of your thing. Yeah, that's right. Um, having the kind of low maintenance setups. Yep. Yeah. I I, like personally, I prefer a planted tank. I know everyone's a bit different, but mm -hmm. just for ease of maintenance and and once you find that balance and they start looking after themselves, then you look around here and, and this is just like. Tank yeah. after tank of just um, plants and yes. yeah, it's something really special. Yes, and I think the most like amazing thing about it is normally you see someone have a fish room, but it won't be this beautiful. Like the amount of pride that you put into your setups yeah, is incredible. You. Yeah, yes, and I think as well just the creativity around it too, with all of the plants like coming out of the top of the tanks and stuff. It's yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah, I do it just for enjoyment, really. Yeah, like, yeah I, I don't do it to. Um, to sell the fish, although that's a benefit at the end of it. I just mm -hmm. do it because I love it. I love gardening, I uh -huh. love fish, um, and just creating nature. I actually like to create an environment, um, a world almost, where you know something is not only able to survive, but it actually to, to, to breed and thrive. You know? yeah. it's, it's really cool to see that you've made something so good that you've actually created the species and moved them on. So, And yeah. particularly with fish, like with all of the... Um, you know the the restrictions and, and lockdowns etc that have been in here it's that lots of so many fish shops are struggling like you know they yeah. can't get the fish in from overseas and everything that goes with that so local breeders are really you know helping to keep the market going and um, some of the fish that are available now weren't available you know three or four years ago yeah. it's because people here are breeding them and getting them out you know as opposed to trying to wait till they come in and just treat them like a um, you know a never-ending resource so yeah I really really love it yeah yeah yeah, I think that's the one thing that COVID did. Um, I think it got people more into their hobbies like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, by force. Yeah, by force, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so um, um, I'll good. take you through these tanks over yeah. here first, I think. Sounds good. So um, the top tank is um, yeah, it's sort of a bit of a mixed tank. It was originally my Stir by Corridora breeding group. It still is, but I've had to... Um, Put some fish in there just because I'm out of tanks. I believe it or not, I don't have enough tanks. Um, but the um, yeah, I've probably got at last count there was 170. The last time I, I counted the stir buys in there, I took them all out and cleaned them. And um, 15 to 20 albino stir buys, which are probably more now as well, but they breed exceptionally well. It's a high flow river tank. It's um, just running on an Aqua One canister filter, and um, I. I've got a sponge filter or I think two possibly in there as well and then there's the water the drip tower at the top next tank down yes I love this one yeah that's an interesting it's tank I didn't I, I don't do anything to it as you can see <laughs> um, but it's a it's quite a rare fish in there they are um, lay lupi and the usual colors canary yellow um, and you do get the orange variety and I did actually buy these as orange many years ago on five or six years ago now but I've managed to, um, to get them to breed to a purple colour, which like this one here on the right is the girl. And so it's essentially a purple Le Lupi. Um, they're breeding true at the moment. The boys are the ones with orange and the purple faces. Um, and the girls go almost completely purple. And um, in fact, I've seen them go black just about as the background. So they're all brothers and sisters in there. I love this one. Beautiful, huh? to Jack at Mad Aquariums as well. Yep. Yeah, yep. and so, Ross down at Living Reef. Yes, yeah, that's actually where I met you. Yeah, um, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at Arcee Discus Aquariums. Yep. Um, so I've done some videos actually. I did a video at Arcee Discus Aquariums and one at Mad Aquariums as well. Um, Jack at Mad Aquariums is where I got all of my African cichlids from. Yeah, great chops. I mean, really yeah, cool awesome. guys. They're, Excellent. They love the hobby. They look after their yeah. customers. And yeah, no, both very cool, very cool guys. Um, mm -hmm. There's also some uh, Julia de Cremus malaria in there. You might see it right up the back corner. You see them on the rock. So they're actually quite beautiful. The transcriptus are the black and white ones. Those guys have um, gold pectoral fins, 
uh, and they get a sheen of blue on them as well. So they are actually a very, um, a really nice fish actually. Next tank across while you're um, looking on that row is the, you can see the blue Alanakara in there. He's hiding up the back behind. Yeah. So um, I think it's pronounced Kobwe. Um, he's spectacular. And I, as far as I'm aware, there's a handful of those um, fish in the country, or at least available. And um, my mate um, Tony was able to get a group and uh, we successfully bred um, 41 of those guys between us uh, in the last month or so. So they're really well and there's no one, uh, there's no babies in there at the moment. He's got them in his grow out tank. But uh, the last time I checked, um, they were actually spawning again. So I'm hoping to get another group of those out. And I'd really like to get them out to the hobby. He's not only is he really personable for um, an African, but he is always spectacular. He doesn't change his color and yeah, really nice fish. And then you've got this yeah, set up. Yeah, too. thank you. That's the um, um, the beta tank that I've got. So he's a red and white dragon. Um, so yeah, he's uh, Fred number one. So um, I have another Fred that I inherited. So but he got his name first. So he um, he lives in there. That's a, a setup that I did. Um, I saw the glass bowl and the the, the timber actually at a, in a shopping center. I thought well, I could make a fish tank out of that and. I put the uh, the light and uh, the switch and um, the, the back section there for the orchids to grow in the bromeliads and put some moss on it and um, that particular tank has got a under gravel yes. um, filter that I've I've basically just uh, manufactured so and it works mm -hmm. runs off the air and it's great. It'd be a really good idea actually maybe to pull that one out to sure. show people. I think a good example of sure. how you do you know all of your filters and stuff. Yeah. Um, and some of your display tanks. Yeah, it's very clever the way that Adrian manages to hide the filtration behind it. Oh, it still makes me so nervous yeah. moving this. <laughs> yeah, no, I've designed it so I can get it out and get into the sun. Yes, it's a good idea. But it's um, essentially, it's like everything here, it's a working illusion, like all fish tanks are. But um, yeah, if you have a look down the bottom, you'll see I've ma just manufactured essentially an under gravel filter um, and a riser for the air to come up and I can vary the, the rate that it comes up, but it's drawing the, the water down through it uh, as it goes. And I've also got, obviously you can see all the mole and the bacteria and the bio media in there. So it, it just sits there and chews it up and I've only got that one fish. So how often do you need to do a water change on something like this? Oh, um, I don't really. I just yeah, top just it up. Leave it. Yeah, I, I yeah. top it up from the water out of the stir by tank, really, if I need to do it. Mm -hmm. But um, I would clean it oh, every couple of months, really. I've got some ramshorn snails in there that don't, uh, they sort of help clean up. You can see one here now that they tend to keep it reasonably clean, funnily enough. Um, I feed him a lot of live food, so I don't have a lot of um, pellets and stuff in there. So That's he'll get idea. mosquito larvae and he'll also get. Um, the black worms that I that I breed over there as well. That's awesome. Excellent. Right. Well, we this can. Way? Yeah. This top one here, maybe we'll start with. Uh, well, the Borelii. He's an Epistogramma Borelii. Um, he does have a little girl in there as well. She'll probably be in the the little hut that I built for them there. I might drop some. Um, brine shrimp in, I think that will probably bring them out. And so this is a dwarf one, is that right? Yeah, so yeah. They're, a, they're a dwarf cichlid um, yeah. from the Amazon. South America regions, there's different countries have different species, but they, um, they're all essentially a dwarf nano cichlid. Reasonably easy to breed um, if, you, if you take care of them. I mean, that's not on the system. That's one of the only tanks that I would um, have to siphon out. And even if I did that, it, it would be rare. Um, I would take maybe 20 to 30 percent out of it. It just keeps cycling over, and uh, in fact, it's probably a good one to show around that that working yeah, illusion around the back yeah. of it as well. Yeah, just watch the mat. Um, whilst you can see at the front, it's all naturalistic. The, the reality is what we have to do to keep it that way. And um, there's a heater hidden in there. Uh, so simple, clever. simple sponge filter. 
the yeah. pot upturned has got a hole, a 32 mil hole drilled through it so they can actually get inside there as their little cave and then the timber at the front will actually hide that. And um, these guys, this is wisteria, um, water wisteria, that I just grow in um, tubs outside, it just goes nuts and then I can pull it out and stick it in, it looks like it's been there forever. That tank has been there for a month. Mm -hmm. So. And then we have these guys. It's a darker tank because yeah, it's a black water tank. Um, you might see some of the colours. These are the babies of the Acaras, of uh, the neon blue Acaras, and they um, they're already for sale. They're all going up to Jacks and down to Rosses. So um, they're in there with some, I think, a dozen maybe lamp eye tetras, some black neon tetras, and just running two sponge filters. That tank and the one below are off the system. They run, they're actually um, plumbed to the stormwater, so I can just turn the water on and drain them out, but they're my quarantine tanks or my grow out tanks or um, you know anything that I might happen to need them for at the time. I've got 20 odd 397 plecos in there, which I'll um, um, grab that light and show you up the back there because they tend to hide up near the... Uh, I think I can see one now. Yeah. So that batch is ready to go now as well. I'm guessing they're probably five, six, seven centimeters between them all. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason this tank is so murky is they, you can see how clean the timber is. There's nothing mm -hmm. anywhere on it. So they eat wood and um, do a great job at it and leave all that down the bottom. That's what I'm excited about with my new tank. Um, I think being able to have driftwood in it so yes. I can get some of the really interesting plecos. I think it does so much for the um, actual biotope itself. It's not funny, it, you know, all of the, the tannins that come out is great, all of the mould that builds up. I let it go, it looks terrible, and then it starts to break down and everything eats it. And I let it go through the whole cycle. I never try to clean it up as it goes. I let it just do what it's going to do. Yeah. Here's another tank of um, babies. They're different parents to these, for these Acaras uh -huh. here. Um, and um, they have a, 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 probably a more consistent blue through them, although the other ones have a deeper, darker shine. There'd be at least 100 um, plecos in there, um, yeah, common plecs. Yeah, these ones are a lot graver. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, the common plecos, yeah. It's so annoying, isn't it? Yeah. The really nice looking ones can't be more like they the hide. ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hard to these breed, guys hide. are... You put food in there and these guys, in fact, I'll just drop a little bit of food in there. Alright, so now we've had a look in this corner here. We're going to go around now to the left hand side and have a look at all of the tanks that are in here. So this has got um, green neon tetras, I should say. They're quite beautiful, yeah, particularly beautiful. in the sun. they were out before. So you can see them over there. On the top of the, the filter and their colors brilliant I mean they they really do stand out particularly in the Sun and then we've got some Hasbrosis Corydoras down the bottom and these guys here in fact there's a little school of them there they are spawning in there but the larger blue tetras and I've only got two of those guys in there um, they they basically eat the eggs really they they're quite aggressive with them so I haven't been able to spawn them out of that the next tank down is, uh, it's got some daisies rice fish in there. Um, a couple of maculatus rasboras. Did have chili rasboras in there, but I gave them to a friend, um, Eliza, from Handpicked Aquatics up there in Brisbane. And she's an incredible fish breeder as well. She um, has got some amazing stuff and her nano fish are spectacular. So she's got a little school of chili rasboras that she's now going to I'm sure smash out some babies. Probably the better of the red cherry shrimps that I've got. I've got quite a few tubs of them, but I choose those guys out, um, particularly for their color. And um, I do so over night time. So if you, you shine your light onto the shrimps of a night time, if they're translucent, even though they're red during the day, then um, they're cherry shrimp. And if they've got uh, a dark red to them of a night time, when you shine the lights on, they're more aligned to the Bloody Mary type shrimp which is the flesh is red as opposed to just the um, exoskeleton. Um, now we have an elusive fish and he's actually right there in the, see the red and white striped one in the Java? Oh yes, there? I see it. So he's a, uh, there's two uh, black tiger darios 
and um, they're in there with some some lime green rasboras again from Elijah. So this fish tank sponsored by Handpicked Aquatics almost. Um, but uh, yeah, so she bred those ones, and they're um, from a similar region. Um, these guys are really uh, they're not difficult if you're good at feeding live foods, but they only eat live foods. They won't take any prepared foods. So you've got to have three or four different types of foods for them and they're nano nano fish so little predators they love mosquito larvae which i feed these guys um, that brine shrimp that's in there any of the black worms from my black worms tanks as well so while we're down here i guess this is the epistogramma uh, nigensi so um, similar to the panduro and um, there is a, a large female in there that looks a bit like a panduro, but yeah, I put their grandparents in that tank as a quarantine tank quite a few years ago now, and um, they've just bred continuously. And I, you know, each time they, um, I think that I've finished with them in the tank, there's always another spawn. And you see her over here, um, I think that's her there, as it might be him, above the little cave there. I've just got upturned um, pots that I again drill those holes in. and. Um, the subwasatang really pretty much covers it and they breed in there whenever they um, whenever they feel like it really. Again whilst we're down here I guess there is um, the little quarantine tank and the so this one's just full of really plants and bits and pieces but it's got 20 cardinal tetra in there and some spawning mops not that the spawning mops are for them these are for my midaka rice fish and it's just the design I got from um, Dean from Aquarium Co-op did these and um, it's basically just a Brillo pad that you cut up and roll up and stick inside a um, foam pool floaty and they lay in and amongst all of these, their eggs in and amongst all of these um, bristles. bristles and they're quite firm which is good and then you can take that out, stick that into a bucket with, uh, you don't have an air stain if it's the Madakas, but stick that in there and then you'll have a ton of fish in no time. Um, I've got a whole bowl full, full of them upstairs, basically, and I stuck them in there um, to hide them for your visit, really. <laughs> um, but, pardon me, but this is where the, um, you, I don't know if you'll see the cardinals in there, but they're big, beautiful cardinals. And the plan is, it was originally just to have it as a quarantine tank, but um, those cardinals do, they're really good at hiding. But I'm going to um, fill it full of leaf litter. Oh, here they are at the back over here. You can see them over there in the corner. Mm -hmm. So they're really big and fat and healthy and I've been feeding them brine shrimp and black worms and anything and everything to, to um, get them into breeding condition and then what I'll do is I'll put maybe two to three inches of, of just leaf litter and I just use stuff out of the bush here at my place and particularly I find eucalyptus is great in the tanks, mm -hmm. eucalyptus leaves. Let them um, breed up for a while and then uh, I'll take the parents out and then see what babies I get out of there. <clears throat> this is a, um, a line of won't see a whole heap from the top, I'm afraid, but they, um, they're a line of um, fire tail endlers that I've got. I'll look at these guys. They're little likes that are just being caught, but see the, um, the fire tail in these guys? If I can put that here, you might see it a little better. The actual fire part of their tail is quite red uh -huh. when they go in there and then their, their tiger stripes are quite defined uh -huh. as they as they grow up so it's just a line again it's just fun I don't really they're not overly expensive to begin with endless but it's one of those ones that you can produce colors that you know it's something that's interesting as part of the hobby these ones are quite rare and unfortunately a little hard to get to you might be uh -huh. able to see from down there but they're a, um, a species of good deer and they're from Mexico, they're extinct in the wild, and they're live bearers. Um, not overly difficult to breed, but also not easy, and you've got to really put the time into them, I think, to begin with. So those guys are only in that tank until they can get outside in the tubs. I've got an IBC. Um, and they're yeah. not common, are they? Like not common. No, them. really underrated too, really yeah. nice fish. Um, the next tank across is a uh, shell dweller's tank, so onto the African water. This is Ornata pinus, a shell dweller. Um, really nice fish, like heaps of personality. Um, not overly shy, they're bred in their tons times. Next tank across is the l Triple Threes. Being plecos, you won't see a whole heap, but there's, um, you might get some tails out of the, yeah. 
the out, of the t- out of the back there. <laughs> so they're the black and the black and white ones. Yeah. Um, haven't spawned for me these guys in a couple of years, and it's driving me insane. So I put oh, them in. Been a couple of years. Yeah, wow. yeah. So for me, um, they're my challenge. So I've got them in uh-huh. now. This setup, uh, which is essentially off the system, and it's um, yeah. you know quite low pH setup specifically. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to uh, almost forget about them in that tank. Um, and it's because I've been told that's really what you should do is and put them in there and forget about them. Yeah, don't focus no. too much on them. Um, I wonder what would happen if you put them in a tub. Like, you know how you bring the fish in tubs? Yep. If you just left them, yep. you know, if they would like a, that. Yeah, in a dark tub. Yeah, yeah. I think being left on I think flow own. particularly is important for them. So if you could get, like, have the aerator going like that, you know, no problems. I think they'll breed in yeah. the tub quite well because it's dark and it's yeah, contained, yeah. you know. Um, and the next tank over is, uh, it's got some 24 karat gold guppies in it. There is... I put them in there as dither fish for the sunspot brevis. Um, another shell dweller. The parents, are the ones in the, this shell dweller is actually quite unique because the two parents will actually share the one shell, um, which is great catching pairs. Um, so they're all the babies in there are the last lot of spawn from those brevis sunspots. They've grown up in there and they're ready to go out now. We might do the next row the above rather than yeah. Yeah. Um, so this one here is um it's got some um, danios just your zebra danios in there again for dither fish for uh, these guys down the bottom which is the black oscillatus and um, there is again another lake tanganyika and shell dweller and they're bred in there quite successful there's one boy and four girls in there mm-hmm. um i usually do one male to two females but uh, there was another boy in there and he died and he's been quite successful with all the girls so yeah. I've got babies in there you'll probably see there's one little one here on the rock Aww. yeah it's interesting you don't see Tanganyikan cichlids very often yeah yeah they're just not as popular as no no people house. like the colours of the of the peacocks yeah. and the, the Malawis yeah. yeah I like the Danios they're again you know they yeah, bread and nice. butter fish cheese and chips but they're just they're always active they breed easily enough. You can you can mm-hmm. breed them every every day of the week, pretty much. Mm-hmm. They breed every morning. Yeah, yeah. I think they're a bit underrated. Yeah. Well, what I like about these guys is that um, I've used them for dither fish for these oscillatus. But what happens is that they'll spawn every day with their eggs. So the oscillatus are eating the eggs. Uh huh. So it's um, for me, it's a like a natural food source, and it's a. Oh, that's, yeah. That's yeah. Good. So any of the egg scatterers above is a dither fish. Um, uh-huh. You'll find that even if the some of the eggs get, and they won't with the number of ram's horns in there, but with the, the eggs, if they do happen to hatch, again, it's if it's a danio um, being eaten by the oscillatus, well, it's, it's the right way around. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, so um, it's a good food source. They, they love it. This, um, this next tank over here is the brochado tank, and there's one of the females in there. That's the one of the mothers. There's a larger mother. So and many babies. Yeah, they breed like... Um, like rabbits. Like rabbits, <laughs> these guys. So, yeah, I actually put them in there, um, getting ready to take the three of them up to Jack's, and the next day I had a spawn. <laughs> wow. So they, they got a bit of a reprieve, and then the, you got the Julia Dichromis transcriptus in there, the black and white ones. Again, they're all like Tanganyika, both of those fish. Um, the Brachardia are called the princess cichlids, and they're really, brut- they're really pretty fish, they are, no doubt about it. Next tank across has got um, Werneri. Um, similar to the brochado, but they're a darker version of the of the brochado, really. But um, I also have the grow outs of my last two spawns of the black oscillatus in there, which you'll see hiding in the plants over here. Which most people don't have plants in with their okies, but um, I find it gives great hides for them. So it, it certainly blocks off when they're aggressive and fighting and carrying on. And then mm. particularly with the babies, the babies actually go into the um, into the, the plant to hide. So, next one across, he's actually out, which is unusual, but he's a batoni, he's a, an adult batoni. Um, that's really just a grow out tank, and again, he was supposed to go up uh, to the fish shop, but he's got a, a trio of girls in there, and they did have a spawn. I'm not sure if I'll keep them or not. I'm, I really like them, I've had him since I, I bred him, he's since he's an egg. Gorgeous. But, um, they're quite aggressive, and he's in there with a at least three or four Capilli Gold, Julia Cromus Capilli Golds, which I'm dying to, to breed, but I don't have the tank room at the moment, so I've got to either move him or move them. So that's really the next project. 
Um, and then I'll get you. Up on the ladder? Yeah, up on your ladder. This is the last time I'm doing a fish room that requires a ladder. <laughs> it does have a handle though. Um, so yeah, I, I really like that tank. That's um, a Lake Tanganyika biotope or biotype. Um, it's got um, Neolamprologus similis is the main fish in there that I set to breed up there, but it also has Julidochromus dickfeldi and the Cyptochromus black bees at the top, which are yeah, quite spectacular, particularly when they get into display and you know they'll, they'll flare at each other and they'll dance and the males are gorgeous. Um, the females are mouth brooders as well, so they're pretty good if you can catch them, get them out. A similis, I like the similis. I've got the um, multifasciatus as well, but the similis are more, I think the, the stripes are more defined and the body shape, and they're, they're actually a much larger fish. Um, you know, I've had those guys, you know, for, I've probably been breeding them for seven or eight years as well. If you look to your right, you see these guys up here displaying up here. Mm -hmm. I've actually, one of them um, has got a gold face and I think it's the one that's going away from you, but he, um, he, he's actually um, quite unique and I've got him breeding with another sort of gold one in there, luckily. So I'm waiting to see what comes out of that, but I've never seen a yellow or gold similis before. So you never know, I might be able to jag something out of that. And a whole heap of the sunset platys, Hawaiian sunsets. The, um, they breed like rabbits as well as you can see and there's in just about every tank um, there's a male and a female in there and they're they're quite large but they they are very shy fish which is why i put them in as dithers but they um they might not be playing nicely today they're probably hiding at the back um, whilst you're up here you might be able to sneak a peek at one of the black calvus over there so that's the girl she's hiding um there's a, a large male in there as well they're still a I, I would think they're probably still 12 months away from breeding size but that's just the calvus up there okay so that tank there is full of cordopunctatus they're, they're another tanganican shell dweller sort of um they will spawn in the shell and the babies stay in there but the parents don't really hang out in the shells it's more just for breeding so they're not they're a semi shell dweller I guess they're all babies that I bred and that whole tank there is um, for sale I'm gonna go somewhere oh, like for breeding you're gonna sell them to someone yep. as a breeding yep. colony also I sell them off as breeding um, uh -huh. breeding pairs now there's also in this tank on the far left there you'll see there's a, m a female black ocellatus mm -hmm. so she is um, got babies in there you might even see, uh, yeah, yep. can see you can see them there yeah so um yeah she's in there and there's another pair another male and female over on this side as well you can see the colors how they um how they darken up the next tank along is the um hawaiian sunset rabbits they breed and breed and breed and breed and they end up in tanks that i just i don't know how the babies get in there but oh, really? they do yeah so um they're crazy those next tanks to your left they're just uh, grow outs for the babies when i um, get the time to move them but um, they have um, uh, that's the other fred by the way the balloon oh, molly yes. so i was given him when i bought a tank and he's 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 been with me a while now probably nearly a year so um, i wouldn't normally buy him and then the next tank across has got the blue oscillatus in it um, the babies are very blue and uh, when they come out and I do find that species are predatory on their babies. They they will actually have a crack. So um, they're not as nice. And the parents, they do, I still think they look gold, but they are they are blue when they come out. Next tank on your left is the Sankey Koi Swordtails. And that's the line that I'm trying to breed true. You'll see there's a few um, um, odd ones in there, but they'll go out when I put them out into the IBC container for summer. So they're gonna be, they, they do last all year round outside and next year I think I will leave them outside. They, they tend to do better, but that's quite a, an attractive line of sword tails. Mm -hmm. um, next one down is the Congo tank. It's close as I can to a biotope. Um, it has the, com the, the normal um, common Congo tetras in there, but it also has the, the yellow Congos in there. And these guys here, 
when they, um, particularly in the sunlight, they, the flashes of the blue and the yellow is really spectacular. Wow. Um, and um, up here I've got uh, one of the crebensis that goes with it. I'll see if um, the male's in there as well. So they, um, they're quite um, a common fish again, but really beautiful. I love them. And mm. the male's wild caught. He's probably hiding in there, but she's more, um, you know, she's used to coming out. There's an elephant nose in here as oh, well. Yeah. So we'll see if we can get him out. I've got some black worms. He might... Um, hopefully smell them. Might have to let that settle and come back to the, you can see the blue on the, the Congos mm, now. Gorgeous. Uh, here he is over here. In the back corner he smelt those already. Can you see him over there? Yeah. He's, um... So here's a Moramid, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh -huh. And um, he uses sonar, not unlike dolphins to hunt and has a um, proboscis nose, um, if they call him an elephant nose, but he's he's fantastic, I love him, he, he only eats live food, so black worms. I think I actually saw them at Mad Aquarium space. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where I got him from. Yeah. So um, you either have one in the tank, or you have, you know, five, six, seven in the tank to, mm -hmm. um, to sort of get rid of, dilute some of that aggression, mm -hmm. but he's a, yeah, he's an amazing fish. And then these guys here, they're the ones that you've got in your main in, tank called your display tank. In the foyer, yeah. So yeah. they're Pseudotrophia solosi. They are um, a, a Lake Malawi cichlid. And uh, this is my backup colony. Um, quite hard to get nowadays, these guys, where they used to be really, really common. But I love them because the girls are yellow and the boys are blue. So it's really easy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought they were just different types. Nope. Wow, that's incredible. It is. So, and you see this gray one here. In the, he said, that's a boy that's about to colour up. Uh -huh. So the, the males, the big boss of the tank, he's the big blue one. And this yeah. is these are just sub-adults. Oh, so they're just, cool. they've only believed, that tank's only been set up for 24 hours. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so um, they're just finding their feet in uh -huh. there. But you'll see at the back there, <clears throat> um, I've got some fake plants. And I don't use fake plants oh, yeah. for anything really other than breeding. And um, the, the, the rationale there is, is that um, if I put a, a pot or a, an upturned container of some sort, um, what I'll do is I'll lay the fake plants either inside it or around it, and then I'll cover it with rocks. And what it does for these Imbuna species, when the mothers, they mouth brooders, so when they spit the babies into the cracks and crevices in the rocks, um, in Lake Malawi and also Tanganyika, then the big rocks are on top, and funnily enough, the smaller rocks are underneath. So there's a series of caves that the babies can hide into, and I'm just replicating that with the fake plants where when I lay them down there and the rocks on top of them, um, once the babies go in there, they, they essentially can't be eaten. And I, you know, I probably get a 80 to 90% survival rate for these guys when I do it that way. You'll see it's covered in pothos and plants, etc. but right down the bottom, um, you'll see the worms coming up out of the, uh, the yeah. substrate. So that's just, again, playground substrate. Um, uh -huh. And I put the, the, the ram's horns in there to sort of keep it clean, but I, that's how I breed the black worms. And I put, um, I put two serves, you know, when you buy them from the fish shop, so two serves oh, yeah. in there, um, oh, probably a year ago. And then I've only just put another two serves in there. They, they multiply by being cut in half. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, so, no way. Yeah, so basically all I do is stir it up. Yeah. And then oh, once yeah, see you'll see them, they just come to the top. Uh-huh. And then, as far as the food source is concerned, um, for my, you know, the beta or the dolphin, um, the elephant nose, you can see they're all in there. And yeah. I just do a scoop once a night, really, for um, the fish that need it. And um, yeah, it's okay. a, it's a, a renewable food source. Then this tank here, sorry, last well, this last couple here. This one here, you might grab the light there to turn on. They're actually blue Madaka rice fish. Um, and there's a whole heap of orange shrimp in there as well these guys in here. Mm -hmm. So they're all the babies that I've bred from the last round uh, out of those spawning mops. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is a tank of gold oscillatus grow outs. Um, I keep plecos because I've got so many plecos. Um, pretty much in every tank they keep the, the algae down. You can see this is going nuts but they're yeah. having a, I think there's probably 20 plus okies in there which means that they do need the cover. Um, 
to sort of keep that aggression down, really. And then you've got your brine shrimp over here brine as Brine well. shrimp, yeah. yeah. So um, I hatch that out every second day. That's just a Zis yeah. brine shrimp filter. Yeah, and I think you have to breed things like brine shrimps and the black worms if you're keeping those types of fish as well that need to eat, you know, live food, or it would just be so expensive. And so Absolutely. Annoying, having to go to the shops all the time. Absolutely. You can see the snails have come out. Any yeah, what's left wow. of Fafnir's. They're so the rose gold, so the purple foot and the rose gold shells. Uh -huh. Could you just talk through the way you've got it all pumped sure. quickly? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So the um, the water goes through um, water filters at the front called, uh, I think they're called the Big Blue, and they're just three water filters from off eBay. Um, it takes out chloramines, chlorine, and all the fluoride, and that's essentially just set up to this um, to this tap here. Uh, in fact, it goes to the whole house, but I've just got one tap set up here where um, I set it onto a timer. This goes to this side, this goes to the other side, um, and I've just used garden filters essentially where um, I can, this manifold, I can divert, um, this is particularly for this side, into the top three tanks or the large eight footer. Mm -hmm. And what happens is when I do that, for me, a water change is as simple as that. Um, and that's now doing a water change on the entire system on this side. Um, I can let that go for five minutes or for an hour. Uh, in fact, when my one day when my timer didn't work, I let it go and it went all night. Oh my god! A whole night, and I was down here, and the the temperature got down to it was 13 degrees in the, all the tanks, and I thought I'd lost everything. Die? Everything was it was completely condensate on the outside. I thought everything was dead, and would yeah. you believe I lost one Akara? No way. No. Wow. So it shows you how tough they are. Down to yeah, 13 degrees, it was it was straight cold water all night. So um, that. Um, all of these tanks are plumbed into this particular um, system which I've taken um, really from, I think it's Kev from Aussie Ponds, I think it is. Basically it's a bio filter and the 100 mil pipe that's in the top there that you can probably just see the top of, it channels all of the water down in the, to the very bottom of this, uh, just a standard, standard garbage bin, 60 litres and I've got a layer of egg crate through here. And then this is like a settling chamber in the bottom. And then on top of the egg crate, I've got various layers of large rocks, medium rocks, smaller rocks. Then I've got bio balls through here. And then on top, you might be able to see in the top there, the, um, the gravel. So it's just aquarium gravel right through. You see over the top there? Yeah. yeah. So that basically is the filter we just uh, cleans everything at the bottom and it filters up through there and once it gets through there it goes through the top and you'll see over the top of this next tank on that side it's um, just bio meteor I think it's K3 uh, yeah. um, the fluidized media and it um, flows from that one right through all the rocks comes up clean sediment I have the overflow or sorry the outlet down the bottom as a um, you know probably once every two to three weeks I'll open that up and discharge any of the sediment out but once it flows through there it comes out into the sock um, and then it's just a standard filter um, of sponges and foam uh, that goes along I leave my brine shrimp on top of the mm -hmm. sump to keep the heat going so I don't have to worry about keeping it hot um, and an air airline that goes through it and essentially just goes through all of the sponges and then through the bio media and at the back there I've got a ton of bio media and then it pumps back up and into all the tanks again. So yeah, nice. it's um, it's continuous. Um, the other side's just got that sump over there. I'd like to put the um, um, the bio system in there as well, but I have to move the canister filter, <laughs> like tank Tetris. I'm thinking just before we finish up, maybe we should quickly just have a look at the inside tanks as yeah. well. So we're just going to quickly show you the indoor tanks as well. And I'm really excited to show you this one because it's a uh, Lake, is it Lake Malawi or Tanganyika in these guys? Uh, this is Lake Malawi. So Lake Malawi guys. Lunacy yep, yep. So and it's a beautiful solo, tank. So. Yes, lovely display tank out the front here. So let's go on in. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Bang, do you want to do it on again? <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> Gives a character. And so this tank is amazing. And the story behind this tank is actually very interesting as well. You yeah, like so um, uh, very quickly is I um, had a tank break inside in the fish room and I was looking for a new tank and I in fact wanted one that looked exactly like this because I'd had one years before. And um, uh, the long version short is, is that the, the day after it broke, I got online and um, uh, went around, saw this tank, started to pull it apart and um, 
the lady said to me that she bought it 15 years ago, which from the same suburb that in fact my wife had sold it from when we were um, living down there. And it turns out when I took the lid off that all of the um, particular things that I'd done with the lighting and all the rest of it was actually my tank. And 15 years later, the day after I actually needed it, which was quite cool. So incredible. most of the eight footer um, tanks in the fish room, the fish that were in there, I'd uh, say a third of them were in this tank. So I'm only allowed to have two tanks inside and the foyer is technically not inside. So these are the two <laughs> tanks that are inside. Um, they're interesting tanks. They're obviously nano tanks and small, but the one on the right there has got a matten filter. It has really beautiful nano fish in there, um, Vietnamese uh, minnows, very similar to the to the Chinese white cloud minnows, but the colors are spectacular and you'd almost describe them as rainbow. And um, there are some crystal black shrimp in there. In fact, there's one on the matten filter. Um, on your right up there, you can see the crystal blacks. Are they uh, the black and white ones? They are, yep. Yeah. So interesting pairings. I've got them in there with Otto Sinkless and there's a whole school of dwarf Corydoras um, over here in the sand, actually. To your left, you'll see them all schooling on the bottom near the pink mm -hmm. flamingo crypt yeah. there and the Otto Sinkless on there. So the pH is fine for them at 6.9 and um, uh, very low KH, higher GH for the shrimp. But there's actually orange eye blue tiger shrimp in there as well that I'm, you won't see, they hardly ever come out, but they, um, I'm trying to breed them uh, with the crystal blacks, which is again, some more on the back of the, the glass over there. So those guys will hopefully throw some, um, some Michelings, which um, we can breed Pintos and other things from, but it's just really a bit of an experiment and something that's a biotope. And then the one on the left there is again, um, not really a, biotope so much but it's a fast flowing river mm -hmm. tank and it has the glass blood fin tetras which I thought um, would look good in there and are really cool and some yeah, I love the green ones. lime green rasbore as they are again from um, Eliza and she yeah she's given me some of her breeding stock there which is fantastic and there's a couple of Borneo suckers there's one on the rock just here which is mm -hmm. quite convenient timing so um, um, I'm going to get a couple more in there and put them in there but they they love the flow I've got the the lights turned up quite bright in this tank so I can get the algae going that tanks probably two weeks old I guess it yeah. that, that's where all those endlers were in that tank I got no, I had nothing but hair grass and endlers in there <laughs> so um, um, it just went nuts so yeah I much prefer it this way. I really hope that you enjoyed the video today and having a look around the fish room that Adrian's got. Um, it's really amazing in there, so I'm sure that you would have enjoyed it as much as we did. Thank you. Adrian's going to be doing some breeding out here in some of these tubs, so. My fish room is now full, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to come outside. But the, um, yeah, so this will change and um, you're more than welcome to come back and see once it's all set up what I'm doing. Yeah, it looks terrible the at the video. moment, but it will actually have um, some, hopefully, look, at least similar and on par with the quality of the fish room. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye. See ya. If I talk and it's here, it should pick me up. Would you be able to just say something like, my name's Ross or something? So yeah. I can just, yeah, could you just say something now so then I can just pick it up? Hi, see my you. name's Ross. Okay. <laughs> I feel like a news anchor or something <laughs> holding a mic.